Hello, everyone. Dennis Spiegel here. Happy fall. Now, due to the crazy economic situations that the world is currently experiencing, and because of some recent big announcements by Disney, I wanted to touch upon an important topic that always manages to be one of our industry's toughest balancing acts, and that is the principle of pricing. Now, we know for a fact that our livelihoods in this industry depend on the continuing spinning of turnstiles. And the only thing that makes a turnstile spin is a guest with an entry ticket. The key is to make sure that the potential guest keeps buying those entry tickets over and over. How is that accomplished when prices must inevitably be increased? Well, a few days ago, Disney announced sweeping changes for its one-day and multi-day ticket pricing for its Disneyland Park in California. And for the single-day tickets, this increase was about a 9% increase. A one-day ticket now ranges between $104 and $179, depending on the day and the tier purchased, with the top tier, the most flexible one, being $179. But the biggest ticket increase was on the two-day ticket, which jumped from $255 to $285, which is a 12% increase. To its many tier pricing options, Disney also added a new tier, zero ticket, that is the cheapest ticket available, but it has a lot of restricted dates. This brings the number of pricing tiers to seven options, each tier offering different perks. The park also increased pricing in other areas. For example, preferred parking prices went up by 11% and hotel valet services went up by 30%. And at both the California and Florida parks, the Genie Plus service that allows visitors to skip long lines on popular attractions was increased by a whopping 25%. Keeping in mind, there's always guests who will pay the premium to price to accelerate their visit and to avoid lines. They'll do it. Disney's not the only company to have ratcheted up prices since the pandemic. Universal and SeaWorld having experienced price surges too. A one-day ticket to Universal Hollywood is currently $134. A non-discounted one-day ticket to SeaWorld in San Diego is $100. At Six Flags, there are a multitude of options which offer budget days with some one-day tickets as low as $50, and this is despite the new CEO trying to move away from what he termed Six Flags, having become a cheap daycare center for teenagers. Now, of course, Disney ticket prices increases are nothing new. Over the last five years, their top tier one day ticket has increased by 36%. Just two months ago, Bob Chapek suggested in an in a CNBC interview that an increase may be coming at theme parks if demand stays strong. He said this, and I quote, it's all up to the consumer. If the consumer demand keeps up, we'll act accordingly. If we see a softening, which we don't think we're going to see, then we can act accordingly as well. End of quote. Now, the numbers to date indicate the demand is stronger than ever. The timing of these increases comes as Disneyland moves towards its 100th anniversary celebration next year. The company said the pricing changes were increased to continue managing strong demand instead of blaming the rising cost of materials such as labor, gas, or inflation. Disney's basing its increases on the consistency of the popularity of its products, and that's not wrong. So what does this mean? Prices are going up, which no doubt worry or anger some potential visitors, yet supplies and demand for Disney products have never been higher in its history. This is what happens with successful products and brands. Look at the prop popularity and success of the iPhone. It's true, a trip to Disney Park is becoming expensive, but this is part of the company's strategy to increase revenue from the visitors and directly control over crowding. During the last several years, the move towards demand day pricing has had positive impact on park revenues. It has also helped alleviate crowding during certain popular periods of the year, such as spring break, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's.
It appears to me that the stock has suffered a little bit, like many companies, but not as a direct result of the price increases. I believe this is more aligned with the strenuous negative economic issues that the world is currently experiencing. Inflation, high mortgage rates, high food prices, high gas. Now, while price increases are occurring, the Disney organization remains hard at work to improve the customer experience. For instance, when you analyze the Genie Plus app, overall, it offers a great benefit to the guests, really. Currently, more than 50% of their visitors are opting to pay an upcharge. Upcharges are not unfamiliar to any of us. We see them every day from McDonald's to our grocery stores and movie theaters and almost in any business that offers a special service. While a lot of different operating strategies in our industry have been forced and born out of COVID issues, price increases have been with us in our industry for the last 12 years. The top seven operating companies have increased their gate prices and internal prices annually. These annual price increases came during some of the best economic times we've seen in the last 15 years. Price increases being considered and instituted now by theme parks are coming, unfortunately, at the worst economic downturn we've seen in recent years. Therefore, the industry can expect to receive flack because no one wants to see price increases. I don't, you don't. But keep in mind the law of supply and demand can allow for pricing adjustments and demand is high at Disney and other theme parks. Overall, one has to ask with price increases, is going to a Disney or any theme park still a good value? The answer is unequivocally yes. The average length of stay in theme parks ranges from six to 10 hours plus. When you break down the admissions cost into a price value formula, admissions divided by hourly length of stay, you find that a theme park still provides one of the greatest values for family entertainment on the planet. A concert could cost two to $300 or more for an hour and a half to two hours event. A professional sporting event could cost several hundred dollars for two hours. So theme parks still provide a great entertainment value for the whole family. And at Disney, there are tre a tremendous number of adventures packed into a day's visit. Guests can experience more than 60 plus attractions and events. And so looking at Disney's current pricing strategy, yes, it is bold, but it's evolving. It continues to offer different tiers for different visitor segments, giving them a broader choice of how and when they want to enjoy the parks. Supply and demand have shaped our economy and our company offerings and pricing during many different business eras. The leader in our industry, Disney, currently is working through their in-house demand and supply issue due to their incredible popularity. They will figure it out and get it correct. They always do. Good luck, Disney. Good luck, industry. And happy fall.